Number 60. The evaporation of one mole of water at 298 Kelvin has a standard free energy change of 8.58 kilojoules. So we see that in this equation right here. We have H2O liquid, which comes to equilibrium with H2O gas. So it's evaporating. The delta G is 8.58 kilojoules. Now for part C, it says calculate the delta G, determine if the, the evaporation of water at 298 Kelvin is spontaneous when the partial pressure of the water, which is pH2O, is 0 0.011 atm. So basically, we have to calculate delta G. Now, notice these two distinctions. We have to find calc, you know, we have to find out a delta G, but then they gave me a delta G, right? But the thing is, is that this one has this little degree sign at the top, and this one doesn't. When you see that you have a degree sign, aka a notch, this is your standard value. So this is under standard conditions of 1 atm. 298 Kelvin, which is room temperature, right? 25 degrees Celsius. So this is the standard value. This is what should be produced in terms of free energy if you're at standard conditions. But now we have to find out a delta G that is not standard. It does not have that notch at the, you know, the upper right-hand corner. So I also know that it's not standard because they did tell me that we had a partial pressure of not one ATM. One ATM is a standard value, but now I have a partial pressure of 0 0.011 ATM. So how do I go from a standard delta G to a not standard delta G? Well, that's this formula down here. Anytime that you're solving for a Gibbs free energy or a delta G that is not standard, right? I have to use this equation. So it, this equation is basically saying, whatever the standard delta G is, we're just going to tackle on the excess stuff, which is the RT ln of Q. You might recognize this by the RT ln of K if we were solving for a delta G standard value. Now, I can't put K because we're not at equal. Well, we might not be at equilibrium. So that's why we have to put a Q here. So let's see, what do we know? Well, let's start with the R value, right? I'm starting right smack in the middle. The R value is always a constant number, right? That's 8.314. Units for the R value, since we're using energy, is joules per mole times Kelvin. So this will kind of give you an idea as to what other units are allowed. So for example, since there's a K, AKA a Kelvin in the units of the R value, the temperature has to be only in Kelvin, but that's cool because they gave us Kelvin. So no conversions there. Now let's scoot over to the Delta G notch, which is the standard value. According to the R value, I'm only allowed to use joules, but for the standard, they gave me kilojoules. So I just have to convert the kilojoules into joules. Now we could just times by a thousand, because that's the kilojoule to joule conversion, or you can move the decimal over three spots to the right. It's up to you. It's the same exact thing. So this would be 8,580 joules now. And that's going to be my new delta G, 8,580 joules. Now, the only thing that's left is this Q value, right? LN is the natural log on the calculator, so I don't have to worry about that. But I have to find out what the Q is. Now, keep in mind that a Q value is the same formula as a K value. It's products divided by reactants. So if my equation is H2O liquid, which comes to equilibrium with H2O gas, we have a product divided by a reactant. I only have one H2O, and since they gave me a pressure value and it's a gas, I'm going to use a pressure. So it would be the pressure of the H2O, and this is the gas, divided by, but this one is a liquid. Remember, no liquids allowed. So technically this would be over one, but it's the same thing as just saying that, you know, it's just the pressure of H2O. And this is the gateway to answering the question because they did tell me that that pressure of H2O was 0.011 ATM. 
So we now know that the Q is going to be equal to that pressure because it's literally the only one in the Q expression. I'm not writing ATM here because when you're talking about a reaction quotient, aka Q value, it has no numbers. But now I know that the Q is going to be that same number, 0 0.011. So now let's just plug it all in. Delta G, not standard, equals the standard value, 8580, plus I have this all lined up, the ln of 0 0.011. And then I have my R value of 8.314. And I have my temperature value of 298. And the great thing about the TI-84 or TI-83 or any TI, you can just plug this all in at one single shot and the calculator will understand what we're trying to do. So let's, let's get it done. 8580 plus 8.314 times 298 times the LN of 0 0.011. I could close the parentheses, press enter. Look at that. Um, if we wanted sig figs, uh, I guess we have roughly three sig figs. So my answer should be three sig figs. So negative 2,590. And just know that that is joules. Generally speaking, though, the delta G is usually in kilojoules, just as you see here. So what I'll do is I'll just convert this joules back to kilojoules. So we'll do the opposite. If we're going from joules to kilojoules, all you have to do is just divide by 1,000. And then we have our answer. Delta G equals, it would basically be, what is this? One, two, three, negative 2.59 kilojoules. And there we go. So that's your Gibbs free energy for a not standard negative 2.59 kilojoules. And then we have to determine if it's spontaneous or not. But we're all good here because a negative, anytime that you see a negative for a delta G, that means that it's always spontaneous. So that's how you figure out that component. And now we are done with the question. What'd you think? I think there's one more problem. Um, I think we're, we still have to answer letter D, so hang tight if you guys are on the playlist. And in the meantime, if you wouldn't mind pressing the subscribe button if you haven't, we're almost at 25,000 subscribers, and it just gets the word out there that this YouTube channel exists. Thank you so much for all your support thus, thus far, all your kind comments, and let's just keep working hard. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.